Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Madrid by Luis Arroyo. He was the political advisor to Spain's former socialist prime minister, Jose Luis Zapatero. Also in Madrid is Cristina Manzano. She's the editor-in-chief of Es Global, a Spanish publication specializing in foreign affairs. And completing our panel is Andrew Dowling. He's a senior lecturer in Hispanic studies at the University of Cardiff. I thank you all for joining us on the Newsmakers. I'm not going to get into where it all went wrong for Rajoy or whether he deserved to be ousted or not. Let's look forward and let's look at Sanchez and what this means. Cristina Manzano, is Pedro Sanchez the right man for the job? Who knows? Who knows? This has been so unexpected that nobody knows what really his program is going to be or what his team is going to be. But uh, he's tried and he's won, and that is democracy. Andrew Dowling, is the Socialist Party that appealing? Nope. Or is the Populist Party just that bad and the Socialists were lucky? Well, I, well, yeah, there are a number of elements. I think the most important element to think about Spanish politics over the past few decades is Spain used to be a two-party system, the Popular Party and the Socialists. Now it's a four-party system. So you've got two parties on the left and two parties on the right. So both left and right parties have to think about what their opposition on their side is doing. So the Popular Party are actually more concerned about what's happening on their right with Ciudadanos, and the Socialists are more concerned about the threat from Podemos. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to think about it in those terms as a, as a four-party system. Right. Luis Arroyo, no democratic mandate from the people, no great power in Parliament. How is this guy going to govern? <laughs> uh... Well, he's got a great opportunity. First, uh, he's got the, uh, an economy that is not in a bad shape. Actually, uh, it's an expected growth of, of, of almost uh, 3%. Second, the mood of the country is, is much better now than it was uh, only two years ago or one year ago. And third, uh, there's a limitation in the mandate. Uh, uh, at the most, uh, he's going to govern for two years. Then we will have elections. So uh, he's, he's got the great opportunity of enhancing the respectability and the reputation of the social democracy here in mm -hmm. Spain, which uh, was decreasing in the, last, in the last times. So we will see. But uh, there's no doubt that there's a great opportunity for the uh, socialists, uh, the one that they, did, that they didn't have uh, even only 10, 10 days ago or right. one week ago. Yeah, so Luis, corruption brought down Rajoy. But corruption is also something that's really plaguing the socialists in Andalusia. So can we expect Sanchez to take corruption very seriously and clean house from, from within as a first priority? He, he, wa he wasn't there at all when, when the case that is being judged, uh, judged right now in Andalusia. So he's not, he's not uh, related to that case as much as Rajoy was... Uh, uh, was uh, was the, the, the one in charge of the whole PP uh, party uh, in in the last decade. So I don't I don't think that corruption is going to be a big thing for Sanchez at this point. Christina, how tough is his job going to be to lead Parliament ahead of 2020 elections if he can actually get there? Yeah, that is very going to be very very difficult. Uh, considering the fragility with which he has uh, arrived to, to power. Um, that is um, his ability to, to make alliances, to get support for several essential issues. I believe that if he is able to identify two or three very social issues that have been left aside by the Popular Party, he will be able to govern, to, make, to pass some laws or to make some advances. If he's not able to identify those two, three issues in which he can gather the support of Podemos, for instance, it will be very, very difficult because um, the parliament is very, very fragmented in this case, and he has got only um, temporary support by the, some of the parties, especially by the independentist parties in Catalonia. Right. Andrew, something that has divided the country over the past year has been the prospect of Catalan independence. They had a referendum, it was deemed illegal, their leadership's in jail. Now, something I don't quite understand is why are some people seeing this as an opportunity when it comes to dialogue with the Catalan leadership or maybe even the releasing of those who the Catalans call political prisoners, given that Sanchez was no fan of Catalan independence and was on side with Rajoy when it came to that vote? 
Yeah, well, I think the principal difference between Sanchez and, and Rajoy or Rajoy's government is since Rajoy came to power in November 2011, Catalan independence, the support for independence stood at about 24%. With Rajoy leaving uh, as prime minister in June 2018, support for independence is 45, 48%. And one of the major criticisms of Rajoy's government is that they never engaged politically with Catalan grievances and they just ignored the issue or thought the issue would go away. So I think I fully um, take on board your points and I think that the Catalan issue, some attempted resolution, negotiations, discussions will be essential for us ensuring um, the stability of the Spanish government over the next few months because there are 17 Catalan independent seats that can pull the plug on Sanchez any time and make the government fall. So negotiations, uh, gestures will be very, very important in terms of de-escalating, if you want, the Catalan conflict. Luis Arroyo, we're hearing from Andrew that Sanchez could address Catalan grievances, but then I go and read articles which tell me that Sanchez called the Catalan separatist leader Torra a racist, right? So tell me what makes this guy special for, he, for, for us to have confidence that he's going to open that door to negotiation and addressing grievances? Well, it's, it's a, little bit, a little bit complicated to explain, but it happens that the same day that uh, Sanchez uh, is, uh, took government uh, uh, last Friday, the very same day, uh, the Article 155 of, of our Constitution, the, the one that allowed the central government to overtake the, uh, the management of Catalonia, that, that article came down because uh, Torra, uh, the president of Catalonia, was able to, uh, to find a, a legitimate government, so to speak. So even in this, Sanchez is being very lucky because the situation, the conflict uh, between the central government and the government of Catalonia is coming down in a very fast way. So it happens that he will be probably even lucky on that, that the independentists are already kind of tired of the situation. The central government has changed. So even in this, the luck will be probably on the side of, of uh, Sanchez. Fresh opportunity, Christina, for the Catalans who want to break away or maybe just negotiate a better deal with Madrid? I, I'm not as optimistic as Luis is. I think uh, it, it is really changing the mood and the attitude, and that is very important. There has been no uh, attitude, no willingness at all from the Madrid government so far to speak, even to speak with the Catalan independentists. And the, the mere fact of, of having a gesture of uh, reapproachment and so on can be positive. On the other hand, if Sanchez goes too far in getting closer, closer to the independentists, which, by the way, have not uh, said uh, at all that they would give up their, their, their demands of uh, independence, of, of reaching a republic. If he goes too far, I think he can leave aside a part of his electorate and he can upset a lot of people from the left who want, uh, don't want at all to hear about the independence in Catalonia. Yeah, that's so a good point. it is yeah. a very delicate balance there. Yeah, delicate balance. Luis, if he called you up and said, Luis, I'm a fan of yours and all the advice you gave to Zapatero and others, what's the first thing I have to do? What would you tell him to do? I was working actually with him when he started his, uh, his run uh, uh, three years ago. Uh, I would suggest and I'm, I think that he is, he's going to do exactly that. I would suggest that he goes uh, for very symbolic things that are important in terms of character uh, that distinguish him from the very bad, uh, uh, the very bad manners of, of uh, Rajoy, yeah. of the president living. So I would say that more or less the things are already done for the two years ahead. Uh, the budget is approved already, more or less. Uh, the, uh, the economy is going quite well. The, the Catalonia is still a problem, but uh, in ways of a certain resolution. So I would say do certain things, just a couple of things that people understand that you are, that you are different from Rajoy. Uh, expectations are very low. Risks, risks are many. I agree absolutely in that. So do just a couple of things that people consider that, that the government we have is different from the one of Rajoy. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. It's been good to uh, 
uh, have the Spanish political situation demystified a little bit and get a sense of what the challenges will be for Sanchez as he leads the country. Christina Manzano, Luis Arroyo and Andrew Dowling, I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.